All right. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. First of all, thank you for joining me today. As I know, everyone here is busy and sometimes training is last in our minds. So I just want to thank you for being on this call. For those of you that may be new to these webinars, my name is Leah Holtrop and I'm the training manager for Orange Hook. As you know, the updated Salamander live site went live last week, Thursday. And if you've had a chance to log in to the updated site, you'll notice that we've done a ton of feature improvements as well as added quite a few new features, all of which that were highly re requested by you. Um, due to our limited time on these call and the numerous content that we have to cover, uh, we'll be uh, covering the updated site in small chunks over the next few months. So, you know, Take a look at your bulletins because that's going to have all the information for how to register and sign up for the next couple uh, webinar calls. Now we do have training videos available on Salamander University that you can view at your convenience to learn the updated site. We'll also have a user guide that will be coming out um, early next week as well too. So for this first webinar, um, what I'll be doing is uh, providing you a deep dive into how to navigate the updated Salamander live site as well as show you how to do some of the administrative components that are in version one and, uh, and how to do that within the updated site. Now, if you haven't done so, um, if you can, please mute your mic just so that uh, we can reduce the background noise for all listeners on the call. Appreciate it. All right, so here's a quick look at our agenda today. First, we'll take a look at how to organize your dashboards then we'll take a look at how to add new organizations, which is very important, um, setting up your security users, uh, creating assignments, and then how to manage your qualifications and training database. So this is your master qualifications and training database. Before we get into the how-tos, I'd first like to talk about what Salamander Live is for those of you that may be new to the solution. The very first step in every Salamander solution is Salamander Live. Now what Salamander Live is, it's a cloud-based solution that acts as a central hub for managing resources and event accountability. Now this is a tool that you, you will use to create all of your tags. Um, this is pre-credentialing. Pre you can manage your qualifications. You can run all your different reports. You can view uh, mapping information and a bunch of different things. It is also the administration tool for creating and editing app users, as well as serving as a situational awareness tool during an event. So this is going to be your main tool that you'll be using during your events. It's going to collect all the information from all your other connected solutions. All right, well, let's get into the site here. First things I want to talk about is the URL. So here is the, the URL for the updated site. You'll see that it's exactly the same as it is today, except the, at the end, there's a V2 at the end, and that's just going to distinguish between the uh, previous version, version 1, and the updated site. You'll notice that the login screen is very different too, so that should be your first indicator of whether or not you're in version 1 or version 2. Now, as, I, as we mentioned in our sneak peek, uh, call that we did last month as well as in our bulletins, what site you use will be determined by your organization. So as of today, both sites can be used side by side. So any ads or changes no. that you do to records, I just it's dialed it on the phone to listen. Site and vice versa. Oh, sorry, I can hear someone in the background. Can you mute yourself? I, I appreciate it. Thank you. So as I, as I said, both sites can be used side by side. So any changes or ads that you do to records is going to reflect in the updated site and vice versa. However, I do want to caution you that this only works for features that exist in both sites. So any newer features that are available only in the updated site will not reflect back in version one. For example, uh, we have a new feature where you can upload documents. Now that feature can only be done in the updated site. So if you upload any documents in the updated site, you're not gonna be able to see those uploaded documents in version one. So I just wanna clarify that for those that may be switching between the two sites. All right, for logging in, your username and password is gonna be exactly the same as what you use today to log in to version one.
Once you log into the site, you'll notice that um, a big change on here. We've done a, a huge facelift to uh, Salamander Live. I'll let it load here for a second. All right, so the first things you'll notice is that you've got a home dashboard. So this is going to be your default page that you'll land on every single time that you log into Salamander Live. You'll also notice that on the left hand side is the uh, navigational panel. So if you're familiar with version one and you've been using it, you'll notice that we had um, all the, the menu options at the top as well as within the, uh, the pages. Well, now we moved everything over to your left panel. Some things you'll also notice that is that we removed the headings for tag and track. So those are no longer there. Now what you have is just direct links. So each of these, um, you can, if you click on it, it's going to take you directly to your personnel list or your equipment list and so on and so forth. Now one thing I want to note on this dashboard, and this is going to be for the home dashboard and the events dashboard. So there's actually two dashboards. Um, the events one we'll take a look at at another time, but the process for organizing your dashboard is the same throughout. So for each of your um, dashboards, you can change your layout and you can kind of customize, customize it to whatever you're looking at. So with each of these different tiles, and this is what we call them as tiles, on the home dashboard, there's four tiles. So these are the default tiles that will pull up every single time, unless you remove them from view. So on here, you've got your personnel list, your quals, so this is going to be for expiring qualifications and training, so similar to what you see in version one, if you've seen that. And then you've got your event list down here. And then, of course, you've got your expiring tags. So this is based upon um, when you're printing tags, if you set expiration dates for your tags. All right, so for each of these different tiles, you have the ability to um, move them, you, you can resize them, you can uh, remove them from your viewing. So if you put your mouse cursor over the heading, you'll notice that your mouse cursor turns into a four-way arrow. If you click and drag it, you can move it to wherever you want it to be. And so like for instance, I put it on top of walls and tags, it automatically replaces those two tiles and puts it on, uh, underneath that. So again, it's clicking, dragging, and dropping. Also on here is the ability to resize. So once you put your mouse cursor over on the tile, you notice that there is a uh, triangle that appears at the bottom right hand corner of each tile. And if you click on that, you'll see that if, or if you hover over it, it's going to turn into an arrow. If you click and drag it, you can drag it to whichever size that you want it to be. So if I wanted to put it like that, I wanted to move this one down here, you can do whichever way that you want to, to organize your, your screen. Now with every single one of these tiles, you could also remove them. So let's say you, you, know, you don't put expiration, tag, or expiration dates on tags and you don't want to view this information. Um, when you put your mouse cursor over the heading, you'll see that there's an X at the corner. If you click on that, that's going to remove it from view and then your home dashboard is going to rearrange itself and then you can click, drag, and drop and start reorganizing your, your uh, layout again. Now let's say that you wanted that um, tile back. It's not completely uh, removed, but um, it's actually just hidden. So at the top right-hand corner, you're going to see there's this icon. It's a tile menu, and it's uh, indicated by four little squares. If you click on that, you'll be able to add the tile back in. So there's the tags tile, and then there's the alert list. So the alert list, this is a new tile that will be added uh, for inventory management, and that's going to be releasing next month. So if we click on that, so that's not going to be uh, available yet. I just want to make sure you um, the, uh, state that here. So you click on the tags tile, that's going to add that back in. Again, your screen is going to um, customize itself, move things around, and then you can just change this to wherever that you want it to be to view your information. All right. Also within each of these tiles, you'll see that there's a summary. So for example, um, each of these tags, so each of these are clickable. So it's not just a, a summary, but it's clickable links in here as well too. So like for instance, in the tags um, 
tile, if you click on expired last 30 days, what's going to happen is that your list is going to update for all uh, uh, tags that are expired or expired within the last 30 days. So you can click on each of these to uh, change your list. And then also you have the ability to download a CSV ex uh, report from um, this tile as well too. And that's going to be exactly the same as what you can do for the qualifications uh, tile. Now for your list tiles, there's two of them as we talked about. There's personnel list and the event list. Now in each of these tiles, you have the ability to search for information so that you can do this right from your dashboard. Again, what we've done is made things more accessible and we've made things more flexible for you. So, you know, you have quick, easy access to your information when you need it. So at the top here, if I wanted to search for information, you can do so. If I wanted to search for Glenna Gossard, I can just type in her name, click enter or click the uh, little magnifying glass and your list is going to update and it's going to display anything that matches uh, per the term that you, uh, the value that you typed in the search record, which we put Glenna. So her file is going to pop or her record is going to pop up on here. And then this is clickable as well too. You'll see that it, it's now clickable and you can go directly into her uh, record. From here, you also have a list view as well as you can add new records directly from this um, list view from the home dashboard. You'll notice on the events dashboard, you don't have the ability to add new, um, add new events on here, but you can view the, the events list. So this is your list of all the events that you've created per your account. So let's take a look at the list view because there's some uh, customization features in here that I want to discuss and show you. So if you click on that, again, this is the same thing as clicking personnel from your left man, uh, menu. So you'll notice that this looks very similar to what you see in version one. It is a little bit different in how it's laid out. Um, at, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, I think I have on here a thousand records. If you click on that, we actually put the max um, up to a thousand records. I, if I remember correctly, um, in version one, it was just 90 per page. So now we've, we've upped it to a, up to a thousand. You'll also notice the change on here is that now it's going to show you how many records that you have total for your personnel. So this is going to change per each list that you that you view. So your equipment list will be different, your assignments list, and your events list. So there's 92 records that we have in here, and we're just showing one of 92. If you change this to 90, it's going to update. And so we're showing one of 90 out of 92. Now, same thing as what you can do in version one, you have the ability to um, customize your list here. So uh, right here, we've got these different columns that we have set up on here. Obviously, every single account, every organization is going to want to view different information and you can do so. Now, if you recall from version one, there was a column in here called selected. And then there's a little drop down similar to what you see here, which gave you some options. What we've done is we remove that and then you'll see in the top right hand corner there is a edit column icon. If you click on that you can actually view all your visible, you can rearrange them, you can add different columns on here. So you'll see that this is an entire list of all the columns that you can view. So for example I wanted to add in a title. All you need to do is click the plus and it's going to add that to the bottom of your list. So this is your visible list. Now if I want a title to be first, or let's say after first name, all you need to do is hover your mouse cursor over the three bars, you'll see it turns orange, click, and then drag and drop it to where you want it to be in the order. So I want it in the third spot. And you can do this for all of them. Now if I wanted to, let's say, remove something, all you need to do now is click the X. So if I wanted to remove organization type code, just click the X and that's going to remove it and throw it back into your hidden column. Once you're done rearranging your columns, just click done. And then your page is going to update and now you'll see that title is now in the third column. Now with every single one of these lists, you can actually um, order them from ascending or descending order. 
So if you click on, let's say, I wanted to organize my list by last name. If you click on the actual header itself, you'll see that it'll, it, you're going to get this little arrow. And now everything has been ordered in descending order. If I click it again, it's going to put everything back in ascending order. So now everything's alphabetically ordered. So that's just a couple different ways in which you can uh, filter your list. Now there's another way, which is the same as what you can do today in version 1. You'll see this little drop-down arrow. If you wanted to search for a specific term, a specific value, or different, you know, a specific record, it's the same thing as what you can use up here in the search column, um, or the search function up here, but this is going to filter your list. So if I wanted everything that started with, or if I, if I can't remember his full last name, and I know it's uh, the ADA, um, I can filter the list, and everything with ADA is going to populate on here. So you've got two records that uh, has ADA, which is their last names are Adams. So again, just a couple different ways in which you can um, edit, filter, sort, and search your list views. Now if you want to remove a filter, so you'll notice that there's a filter that's been set. If you're, if you're familiar with working in the track app, you'll see that this icon is the same as what you see in the track app. And basically all it just states is that, hey, there's a filter that's been set on your list. If you want to remove that filter, you do have to click on it. Sorry, click on the little um, arrow. And then delete the information or just click clear. And that's going to clear your filter. All right. So open up for any questions that you may have on the navigation and customization of your home dashboard or your list views before I move on to um, the administrative components. All right, oh, I see this blinking. Let me just double check there's no. Um, let's see here. Is it possible to, to select between the original site and new site somewhere? Um, yes, so what I would do if you're logging in on here is to make sure you save it as a favorite. So you, you know, I would save it as Salamander Live version one and then you can do an updated Salamander Live, or you can put it as version 2, whichever way that you want to name it. Um, original site and new site version 2 can be accessed by visiting the respective URL links. This is not a toggle button with two sites. That is correct. It's not a toggle. So you do have to enter in the URL. So for version 2, just enter in the V2 at the end of your, of your version 1 URL, and that's going to get you into this new site. So best way to do it is save them as favorites, again, as two separate sites. Um, see, someone has issue logging into V2. Make sure that you uh, have HTTPS app.salamanderlive.com slash V2. Thank you, Jonathan, for providing the link. All right. So I think we answered all the questions and issues with accessing Salamander Live version 2. So next we'll take a look at um, the account setup. So first things first, even before you do you know, creation of personnel, uh, creation of equipment records, and security users, it's, it's important to first create organizations because everything that you create with in, in Salamander Live is going to somehow link to an organization. So it's important that you do this first. So in your left column, you'll see organizations. If you click on that, that's going to take you to your organization list. Now, if you have your organizations already created within um, version 1, all that information is going to migrate over. So anything that you have in version 1 is going to migrate over. Nothing has been de uh, deleted or removed. But I do want to show you how you can create new organizations if you need to within um, the updated site. So on here is your list view for all your organizations. You'll see this it's set up the exact same way as your personnel list. So at the top here you'll see there's an add button very similar to what you see in version 1. If you click on that the create new organization form is going to populate and this is a short form. So this basically what it does is it says here's all the required information you need to enter in in order to create a new organization. 
So anything that's required, so any field that's required is going to have a little asterisk next to it. So that means it's required. So let's say we wanted to add in a, um, an organization. You can change the identity code if you want to, but same thing as in version 1. Uh, the system auto generates an ID code for you for this organization. Next, select the type. Select your country. Select your state. And then select your parent organization. Now, if, you're, if your account has multiple parent organizations, you can select them from here by just typing it in. So if I typed in, um, I actually only have one. So. But if you had multiple, you can type it in, and a drop-down list is going to um, display for all the uh, different organizations that you can select on here. You can type in a URL if you want for your organization, enter in notes, and of course, select your time zone. Once you're done with setting the information on here, click Save. Once you click Save, it's going to take you directly into your organization record. So in here, you'll notice that your form has changed. So this is a big change that we've done to all of the forms. So this, this layout is going to be pretty much the same as what you'll see for personnel, equipment, and organizations, as well as your security users. So if you know how to work one form, you'll be able to um, work the other forms on here. So on here, let's say if you wanted to update the profile, so the general profile of the organization, you can click on this header and that's going to pull up the profile window again. So same one as you saw when you were trying to create a brand new uh, organization. Now each of these um, forms have headers and there you'll see that each one of them are orange. If you click on that, that's going to pull up a window and where you can enter in additional information. So if I wanted to add in a phone number, random phone number, if I wanted to enter in an address for this, You'll notice that we have geolocation set for this, same as what we have within um, version 1. Whatever you type in, it's going to find some matching um, addresses based on your GPS location. And once you select an um, address, it's going to auto-fill in the rest of the information, even including latitude and longitude. Once you're done, click Save. And you'll notice that information populates on your form here. Now for every single organization, you do have the ability to upload a logo. The difference is that we've added an additional feature. So this is going to be for all um, list views, so personnel, where you're able to add a photo, equipment, and organizations. So under here, you'll see that when you put your mouse cursor over this um, image, you'll see that there's two options that pull up on here. This is a video cam, so you can actually take a webcam. Um, image. I don't know for for logos though. It does. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Most organizations will have a pre-created or pre-designed logo. So most likely you'll be uploading the um, your logo. But I'll just show this so that um, you can see how this works. So if you click on the webcam, hello. This is going to pull up the direct capture window. And then if you want to take the picture, just take the picture. If you want to retake it, just retake it again and then take picture. Once you're done, just click Save. So before this actually happens, you're, you might get a little pop-up that says, hey, do you want um, your computer to, to access your webcam? And this could be a camera that you have um, installed on your computer or, or laptop, or this can be an external one that you have set up and, and plugged in through a USB. And of course, you have the ability to upload. Again, just click this. This is going to bring you to your your files. If I wanted to put in this as my logo, that's what's going to pop up on here. You'll see that it immediately um, uploads the image. And then if you put your mouse cursor over this, you'll be able to delete it and edit or re-upload a different picture. Now for file sizes, this is the same for all pictures. Um, it's going to be, your, your image has to be less than 4 megabytes. If it's larger than that, you're going to have some issues in, in uploading this doc or this image. And of course, you also have the ability to upload signatures. So this is the same as what we've done today. Again, just click this little icon. It's going to pop up, and you can search through your, um, your files to find the signature that you want to add on here. 
Most organizations don't use the, the upload signature option, but if you wanted to, to, you know, better authenticate your tags, you can definitely do that, you know, putting a, you know, your, your chief um, and whoever is your chief administrator, you know, their signature on here for security purposes, you can definitely do that. All right, so any questions on adding an organization? All right, let me just double check, make sure there's no questions. See a question, when you upload users from a CSV file and you have a unique ID, will it overwrite the existing ID or will it create a new ID? Um, answer to that is it's going to overwrite the existing ID. And that's part of our import process. So that we're gonna cover um, in September. And that there, when you um, are importing in information, whether that's personnel or equipment, um, you can either do brand new records and or you can do existing records, meaning that you can update information. So whatever you put on that um, import file is going to replace whatever information that you have within Salamander Live already. And the, the indicating factor, the, the distinguishing factor is going to be that ID number. So if that ID number already exists within Salamander Live, it's just going to update whatever information that's for that matching record. Now if that ID does not exist, that's going to create a new record for that person within your database. Hopefully I answered that question. Uh, another question on here, is the website still the workaround box for signatures? Um, I'm not sure I understand that question. So if you can clarify what you mean by that question, that would be great. Are you talking about this signature box right here? I see this is from Colorado. Leah, this is Brendan. We, uh, through the organization settings, we, a lot of our organizations upload the department head signature. Uh -huh. um, so if it's, you know, um, Pottawatomie County Sheriff, they'll put the sheriff's signature. Um, so I think that might be what the question is. Ah, uh, okay. Um, yes. It, it, it is, Brendan, but it's also where we've got to have the typed uh, version of that. So it's, you know, Sheriff Joe Johnson, Pottawatomie Sheriff or whatever because you can't decipher what their signatures truly look like. So that's, we use the website address box to put the text in of the signature that goes on the organizational card. Uh, yeah, that stays the same. That's what we yep, that's still the same. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Can the state and time zone be set by the master state account by default versus having to do it on every organization? So this is, this does have to be done in every organization. So that is the only thing on here, only because some organizations are outside of that state. So it's not auto set. So you do have to set that for every single organization that you create. All right, I think that's all the questions that uh, came up. Again, while I go through stuff, if you have questions, please feel free to ask them. All right, now at the top, you'll notice that there's a back to list. If you click on that, that's just going to take you back to your organization list. So again, just some additional navigational functions that we've added on here. Or of course, you can click any of these direct links on here. Next, we'll take a look at assignments. Again, this is also a administrative um, setup piece that um, you as administrators will have access to to do. So this here, I know we talked a little bit about this, um, the assignments piece for the track app, but just as a reminder, your assignments list on here, everything that you add within your assignments database is going to be downloadable and viewable within the track app. So that's why it's important to uh, create your assignments list beforehand so that you know, your track app users can access this list. And most organizations will use a standard list that they want all of their um, track app users to be able to use so that they're not creating new ones on the fly, even though you can create new ones on the fly within the track app. But this just makes everything um, um, universal and uh, standard. So on here, everything that if you've created an assignments list already, all of that's going to migrate over. So on here, you'll see it's the same um, customization options that you have that we showed you earlier. 
If you want to search for specific assignments, you can do so. You'll notice that at the top uh, right hand corner is the same uh, function. So if you wanted to add a new assignment, just simply click the Add New Record, enter the organization name. So if I type in Moosewood, there's going to be a bunch of different Moosewood um, organizations on here because I have I created all those. That's why it's important to create those organizations first because you can have a different set of assignments for every single organization in here that you have. So if I just like to type in Moosewood EMS, um, select the assignment level, um, we'll do section, and then click save. And you'll see that that's been added on here. So operations section, e Moosewood EMS. I can organize it if I wanted to. So very simple, very easy to do. Now if you wanted to print your assignments and create your resource book, which is an option, especially for those that have any of the um, PC-based solutions like Command, it's always uh, great to have um, your assignment barcodes readily available. So in this column you'll see there's check are these check boxes. If you click on these, you'll see the whole uh, different set of, of icons will populate on here. So if you wanted to remove an assignment that you created, just select it and then you can delete it and you can delete multiple at a time and then of course you can also print so I just want to show you printing on here if you have not set up so I've already set up my print control so in version 2 so in this updated site you do just have to update it so if you have a print key for for printing tags um, there there's gonna be a box that populates on here that says hey you have to update your print control uh, software. If you don't have any, you're brand new to it, you want to install your print control and, and enter your license keys. But again, these options on here for printing are exactly the same. So if you're familiar with printing in version 1, uh, the, the process is going to be the same in version 2. So select um, your printer and then your design and number of copies that you want. So any questions on assignments? Let me just double check here. Is this the same list that Command uses? Um, no. In Command, you have the ability to create your own list. So most um, organizations will ha will use some sort of you know ICS type chart naming convention. So if you want to use that, you definitely can. If your organization doesn't follow that, and you let's say you're you're in the education sector and you want to do classes or trainings, you can change your assignments to wherever you need it to be. So it can match what you have in um, in Command if you created templates but it's kind of really up to you and how you want to create this your assignments list and up to your organization. So I would you know, definitely recommend you to ask your, um, your administrator or take a look at your standard operating procedures for how this should be done. All right, any other questions on assignments? All right. So now that we've created organizations, we've created assignments, let's take a look at security users. So again, we'll click the security users option from the menu. This is going to take you to your user list. So these are all users that you've created that have access to either Salamander Live or any of the other solutions that you've purchased, which is, you know, RapidTag, uh, the, the Tag app, the Track app. So. And I, and I didn't mean rapid tag, meaning access to rapid tag. More of that is more towards them having access to Salamander University to learn how to use the rapid tag, so your PC based solution. So, just to clarify on that. So, same thing on here. These options are exactly the same. If you want to delete um, a person that you created in here, you definitely can do that. Select their name and then click delete. Now, if you wanted to add a new person to have access, just click the little plus icon and that's going to again take you to a create new security user. This is again the short form. So enter in the security user's name. So this is their username, whatever you want them to use. I know uh, some organizations like putting email addresses, so use whatever is um, best for, for, for your users and your organization. Create a uh, dummy user 
security user here. Now, one thing I do want to note uh, note on here. So, as you can see here, that as I was typing, you see that this populates. This means that there were actually um, personnel records that were created. So, if you you can do it two different ways, you can create the security user first and then link the record within the security user uh, record, and then you can just go back and update that personnel record. So you can create it directly from the uh, security user profile, or you can create the personnel record first and then go and create a security user, and then you can click from your options here to connect them together. So on here, if I was going to connect this to Salamander Trainer 7, meaning this is the record that matches, and this username was Salamander Trainer 7, I can select this, and it's going to link those records together. Linking of records together is going to be um, very important. That's an important process for making sure that the person has access to the tag app and all the data within, within the tag app. So being able to pull their personnel record into the tag app, as well as being able to create um, their collection of companies through that and have access to personnel data. So on here I'm not going to select these because Salamander Trainer 9 does not have a personal record. So that, type in your password. Again, this is um, at least one low, lowercase, one uppercase, and one special character. Once you type in a password that is uh, acceptable, you'll um, just remove that um, warning, uh, warning message. Passwords matches, type in the email address, and select the organization. So if you type in whatever it is that you're typing for organization, you'll see that a um, possible matches is going to populate down here. You can select whichever organization you're looking to add uh, this individual to. So we'll add this to Alaska, Alaska FD. And of course, enter in your time zone, and then click Save. So this time zone is going to be important. You'll see that it's required. This time zone is important when you're using the, um, the mobile applications, the tag app and the track app. It's going to pull that time zone into your, um, your applications. And of course, the, your application is going to pull your GPS location where you're located anyways, but this is going to be important for uh, making sure that um, time is accurate on your reports. And click Save. Once you click save, this is going to take you directly into your user profile for the user that you just created. So on here, you'll see that there is some prof basic profile information at the top here. If you want to edit any of this information, you can do so from here. So um, you can edit everything on here if you'd like to. If you wanted to email, so these are direct emails, if you want to email um, this person, which I highly recommend you do to make sure that they get their username and password, and of course, provide them the URL for accessing Salamander Live if that's what you provided for them or for the track app or tag app. You can click this and it's going to pull up a email uh, if it's attached to let's say Outlook or something so there it is. They want to change the pass if you want to change the password for this just click this link and you can change the password. So this is what I was talking about. So on here it tells you if you want to turn on the tag app or link a personal record to the user account you can do so from here. So you can choose from the match options. What that meant was when you were doing the profile, the match options right here. If there was no match options, you can click to create a new personal record directly from this data. So this is going to take this data right here and it's going to create a personal record. So we're, go, we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to click here and what's going to happen is, is this little pop-up is going to populate saying, do you want to link uh, the person Salamander Trainer 9? Click OK, uh, click OK, and now what it's done is created a personnel record for Salamander Trainer 9. So now it links that record. So now what you'll have to do after this is to go into your personnel records, your personnel list, and update that record for additional information. So now that we've got the profile and we linked the record on here, next on here is your products. 
So you'll notice that we've kind of uh, grouped all the products into, or I'm sorry, grouped all the features into their main products. So under Salamander Live, you got the option for, um, G for adding GIS mapping. That's an additional a la carte feature as well as plan. If you click on the little uh, carrot, that's going to do a drop down and that's going to give you the options for you what, for what you can select on here. Now you can select, let's say I want this person to have Salamander Live, but I don't want this person to have GIS mapping. So you're not going to select that. Now, if you used up all of your uh, licenses for Salamander Live, Track App, or Tag App, now those are not going to appear on here, and you're not going to be able to add anything. You'll, you'll see this little X that, that populates on here, meaning you can't add anything, meaning it's going to also show up on your, um, where you can't uh, click the check mark on here. Now, you'll notice that it automatically added it to the uh, count. So if your account has multiple uh, parent accounts where you can select uh, different organizations for them to have access to. That's going to uh, allow you to do click the little drop down and you can select one. Since this account is, is only does, only has one parent organization, there's only one selection that we can select from here. And that's going to automatically pull that information here. You'll also notice that there's contract information on here. So the contract ends on January 1st, 2020. So that's going to be for every single one of your applications on here that you add. So if I wanted to move down the line, I wanted to add a track app, you'll notice that the, there's only one is a track app. Um, every, once you purchase the track app, you also get identity verification. So if I wanted this person to have the track app, I can click that as well. And then the tag app, you'll see that there's no additional, there's no other features with this, so I can just click that. So now I've given this person Salamander Live, track app, and tag app. Now, once you've selected the products, the next thing that you want to do is select the role. So this is the security role, meaning what permissions do you want this person to have within each of these products that you've selected? So on here, if you click the little drop down, you're going to see all of these different options. So depending on what you want, let's say I want this person to have administrative actions on here. So I want them to have access to do everything. You'll see that once you uh, select a role, you're going to see this little info icon that populates on here. And this, if you click on that, it's going to pull a chart. So this chart is going to detail um, all the uh, permissions for this role. So this is going to be administrator role. It shows you everything that they have access to for creating. They can read records. They can update records. They can delete records. And they can print records. And of course, they also have incident management on here. Now, if you're unsure about any of these different ones, you can just click on that. So let's say I wanted to do uh, Incident Manager. Click the little icon, and it's going to show you exactly what that person can do. All they can do is, is manage incidents. Once you've selected your role on here, next is to enter the organization. So this is going to be what organization do I want them to have administrative access to for Salamander Live? So this is at the child level, since the parent level is Salamander or Sal training, which is the parent, I want them to just be able to manage Alaska FD. If there's any children organizations underneath Alaska FD, especially if you have like different departments or anything, um, you can select children so that that person can also manage any children organization information. And then once you've selected your um, options, click apply. Once you click apply, that information is going to populate down here. Now when it, when it comes to the apps, there is one role that you, you do need to add for every single app user, and that's going to be the app user no medical. So for every single uh, security user, you can add multiple roles on here. So for the app user, if you click on that, you click on the info, it's going to show you, hey, they have the ability to read information and they have to, the ability to manage, in, um, manage incidents or events, and that's going to be part of the, uh, the track app. Click OK, select your organization, Alaska FD, and children. Now usually for um, apps, for the app using uh, app users, 
we normally will have them have access to the, you know, we hi highly recommend organizations to give them access to the entire organization, not just their, the organization which they're managing. So again, this is totally up to you on how you want to do this, but this is something we do recommend because when, especially when they're using the track app and they're a track app user, we want them to be able to pull down the entire list uh, from all organizations, especially if there's, you know, they're all responding to one to one event or incident, you'll be able to access and download all the information within the track app. So that's going to pull everybody's personnel records as well as their equipment records. And of course, include children. So that because there's a bunch of organizations underneath Cell Live, and then click apply. And then now this person security uh, role and profile is complete. You'll notice that anytime you make a change on this form, it auto saves. So that's going to be important. Now, one thing with the role is, of course, making sure you click apply. Now, I do want to add on here, as I stated earlier, that you can provide your users access to Salamander University without taking away from your licenses. So if, let's say, you wanted a person to just have access to the track app and the tag app, but you don't want them to have access to Salamander Live, you know, of course, select these options on here, select their roles. You'll notice that the um, administrator role was, um, we want to remove that. And then you'll see that just the app user on here. Now, what you want to do for this person is provide them. So you want to email their username and password so they can access Salamander University. I mean, they can still log in. They're not going to be able to do anything within the Salamander Live site, but they'll be able to access Salamander University and view the training tutorial so that they can become proficient in using the apps. So that's going to be very important. And that's going to be the same for all of your personnel. So if you've got multiple, um, you've purchased multiple products, let's say you purchased Rapid Tag and Command, same thing on here. You want to give them access. So you would remove all of these products if they don't have access to the products. And then all you need to do is just make sure that their profile is completed in here and then send their email or send an email with their logins. So they're not actually tied to any products on here, which is not taken away from your licenses, but they have a username and password so that they can log in here to complete training. Because Salamander University um, holds all training, so it's going to hold training for all uh, Rapid Tag, Rapid Tag EVAC, Command, um, some basics on ID Designer, uh, and of course your mobile applications in Salamander Live. One thing you'll notice in here is that if you wanted to delete a record, you can also delete it directly from this profile. So you'll see at the top corner, there's a delete. And of course, you can go back to your list and delete it from there too, as I mentioned earlier. All right, any questions? Uh, let's see here, let's go back. If you delete a security user, does it still delete all records they entered as well? No, the security user is uh, is a separate record from their personnel record. So if you delete the security user in here, for instance, if I delete Salamander Trainer 9 from as a security user, their personnel record is still going to exist in here. I'll just show you this real quick. Oh. So you'll see here, Salamander Trainer 9 is still in the system as a personal record. Um, if we are a child organization, will we have to have the parent organization remove ad security users? It depends on what your um, administrator gives you access to. So if you're a child organization, but your administrator for your entire account gives you a user for Salamander Live administrative access to um, your organization, then you'll be able to remove and add security users just for your organization. Now, if they gave you access to uh, all of the organizations, then you'll be able to remove and add security users for all organizations. So what's important on here is when they select that administrator role is what organization that you'll have access to. 
And of course, if that organization has any child organizations, you'll have access to all of that too. Now, if you are a child organization and there's no organizations underneath you, but there's a bunch of organizations above you and your administrator only gives you access to your organization, then that's all you can do is you can only remove and add security users for your organization. But again, the removing adding of security users is only available for the administrator role. Another question on here, is there a way to print a QR code list of organizations that we can scan like an assignment list? Yes, there is. Um, and let me verify that. Nope, that is not an option. So I apologize on that. I thought that was something that we had changed on here. But no, you cannot print um, QR codes for organizations. Um, and, I, and I see where you're getting on that, why you'd want to assign, you know, why you'd want to print organizations, you know, and have a QR code. However, the, you know, when you're looking at in, in managing the incident or event, what you're really um, looking for is that personnel and equipment. And what's going to happen is that when you scan in that personnel record or that, that equipment record, it's going to pull up what organization they belong to. And then um, within the reports, because we have a bunch of different reports that will be available tomorrow during our um, updated release, you'll be able to um, view that report that has, you know, it, and it, it's going to be divided up by organization. So you'll see what organization has personnel or equipment that has been assigned for that event. Um, mainly for rapid tag to be the same. I'm not sure I understand uh, that question on there. The the question has to do with two-way synchronization and rapid tag. When you put an organization into rapid tag on one computer, that organization doesn't go over to the second. That issue will be addressed in the coming months that is on, some, on development that Salamander is doing. Correct. Thank you, Bren. Yes. Um, yes, that is underway for development. Um, we are looking at, you know, the next couple of months here. So we're kind of getting, you know, inventory done. And that's, and rapid tag is the next thing. The two-way sync is the next thing that we're working on. So that is going to be, we're probably looking at September, October for, for that there. But don't quote me on that because <laughs> I don't know the development schedule. I just know that we, they are working on it and that we are going to start developing uh, training for that in the next, next couple of months here. Great. Any other questions? All right. Last on here is qualifications and training. So, and this is going to be your master list. So this is not what you, you know, not managing what your, per, this is what is managing what your personnel and equipment records will be able to select when you're adding qualifications to their records. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So click on qualifications and training. You'll notice that there's two different tabs at the top here. There's a little starburst, and that's your, going to be your qualifications. You see there's a little cap on here, and that's going to be your training. So what we've done in the updated site is that anything that has any qualifications that has an education type to it has been um, removed from the qualifications list and added to a training list or a training tab so that you can manage your, um, your trainings separately. Now on here, um, I know that they are still working on this for the national and uh, federal in moving this education folder on here so that you'll see all of your like ICS trainings from FEMA, your ICS 201, 200, 300, all that's going to be listed in here. So on here, you'll notice that there's two different uh, toggles. So this is your chart view or your tree view and then your list view. For those that have um, used the qualifications and you know, and have access to qualifications database master list within version one, you'll, you'll be very familiar with this um, qualifications tree. The only difference with this is that we separated the two, so we threw your master list into this link over here. In version one, it was just on the same page. So this here are all going to be your tiers. So there's a federal, national, your, your state tier, your regional tier, your local tier, and your other. Any qualifications that you had created, especially, and also folders that you created in um, version one will be migrated over. 
Now, if you don't have anything, you're brand new to Salamander Live, um, your folders are going to be empty, and that means that you have to create them. So um, you'll see that these are just some test ones that were created in here. So for federal and national, these are all going to be um, qualifications that are not edible, which means that you cannot add folders to these, nor can you add qualifications to these folders. These qualifications are managed by Salamander. So if there's any that you see in, uh, that you know that it, that's a qualification at a federal and national level and you want them in here, um, just make sure that you send um, either your, your sales representative or send it over to support at salamanderlive.com and they'll uh, make sure to, to add those in in their next release. Now each of these folders are clickable so there's a little, uh, you'll see this, there's a plus and minus so it will collapse your, your list or your folder. So on here you'll see that under international there's a bunch of different uh, qualifications on here. So these, of course, are available within the personnel list. If you click on personnel, it's going to be available for you to uh, select from. Now your state and national, or state, regional, and local are folders, as I stated, that you'd have to create. So these folders, you can create whichever, you know, folders that you want. You can name them whatever way that you want. Add qualifications that are based off of your organization's and your people's qualifications. So. Um, if you're, I'm just going to delete these real quick to show if you, you're brand new, this is how it's going to look like. So let's say you had no qualifications in your training, or I'm sorry, in your um, qualifications folder. You'll see that there's a little link on here to create a folder. If you click on that, you can get this uh, little pop-up and you can create your folder. So we're going to just name this as... Click Save, and now it's going to create your folder. Now, if you wanted to add qualifications from your master database into this folder so that's selectable for personnel and equipment, you just need to select it, which is going to make it active. And you'll notice that the Quick Add Qualification box is now um, active. So all you need to do is type whatever it is that you're looking for. So since this is a hazmat folder, we'll add in hazmat qualifications select your qualification from the list and it's going to automatically add that into your folder. And there it is. Now with this folder you are able to right click it so if you right click this folder it's going to bring up a couple different options. You have the ability to create a brand new qualification. So this is a custom qualification. So one thing I want uh, to note first is to make sure that it doesn't already exist. So I would go through your qualifications list first to make sure it doesn't exist so you're not creating duplicates in there. But you can create a brand new qualification directly from um, your qualifications tree. You can also edit this folder if you want to. You can delete it and all its contents. You can add a new folder if you like. So we just go ahead and add a new folder. Add law. Click Save, and that's going to add a subfolder. Since we created the folder underneath Hazmat, what it does is it adds it as a subfolder. If you wanted to remove this on its own, you can right-click it and click Move to Top. Once you click Move to Top, it's going to move that subfolder out, and it's, it's going to become a parent folder. And then since it's selected, you can start adding in your qualifications into that folder. Oops, sorry about that. If you wanted to move, so like on, on there, I accidentally added it to the hazmat folder. You can just click, drag, and drop it to the folder that you need, need it to. So I'm going to click, drag, and drop it. You'll see that the law enforcement folder is now active. Just drop it, and there it is. Now it's been added to the law enforcement folder. Uh, let's see here, same thing that's going to be for local and other as well too. So now that when you go to personnel and equipment and you go to your qualifications to look at adding qualifications, if you go to the regional folder that you just create or that do you uh, just created for all these folders, you'll be able to see hazmat and law enforcement in there and you'll be able to add these qualifications to personnel and equipment. Now let's go ahead and look at how to add a new qualification. So let's just take, well, first let's take a look at your list first. So here's your master qualifications list. On here we've got 10 listed. There's 1,601 entries that's available. 
again, th this number is going to de be dependent on, on how many additional uh, custom qualifications you've added into your database. So you can filter, same thing if you're looking for a specific one, you can click the little drop down and filter your list. So if I wanted to add a brand new one from this list here, just click the little add, enter in your code. So this is the code for the qualification, um, whatever you want to put in here. Um, I know some organizations like to put in, especially if they have um, qualifications at a state level, the same qualification at a state level, regional and local, they might put their organization information on here, like the, if this is for Alaska FD, and then their whatever the qualification is for this. And then here's your description, what is this qualification, and then the kind, so you can select the, the kind on here, so uh, what kind of qualification is it, is it a personnel qualification, services, team, vehicle, and then if there's a NIMS type. So the NIMS type's not required, but you can enter that in if you know what the NIMS type is on that. And then just click Save. And what that's going to do, it's going to add that qualification to your database here. Once you're, you've added a bunch of qualifications in here, you do have to go back in here, especially if you want to be selectable um, within your personnel equipment uh, records. You have to go in here and then add them into whichever folder that you're looking to add them to. So they are selectable. The same process can be done for training. If you go to the training side, you'll see that it's orange. That means it's the uh, active uh, toggle. You can add state uh, training qualifications, regional certs, local certs, or other. As I stated before, we'll, we'll, we will be adding the uh, ICS trainings in here. But if you go to your training list, you'll be able to find all the ICS ones in here. And there they are. And there's 77 entries in here. Same thing, just click the plus, and now you can add a training one or education one. You'll notice that the kind, the only thing you can select is education. All right. If you need to delete anything, you can click the little, actually, apologize on that, you can't delete on, on this page. All right, any questions that we have on here? Um, confirm, quals and training at the tier two and below level are managed at the state admin level, and can I allow, not allow a local agency admin the ability to add or delete in either qual or training? Well, we kind of just covered that. You can't delete um, qualifications from either, um, from either one. I thought that we were gonna be able to do that, but I don't think that was gonna be for this release. Um, if they are set up as an administrator or there's another uh, role called resource quals management, they will be able to manage your entire qualifications database, whether it's at the state level, regional level, or local level. That just means that they have full access to the qualifications. So that might be something that you would want to put in as a, as a procedure for anyone that's managing qualifications is that they have to, you know, double check, make sure the qualification exists first, make sure that there's some sort of naming convention that's, that's uh, set so that there's no duplicates. Does the quick add search field now look across tier one and tier five quals training or just tier one like now? It, it looks uh, on throughout your entire database. So whatever you add or whatever you type in as your search value, it's going to search the entire database for it. Codes still limited to 10 characters. Uh, I believe so, yes. So I added a new Qualler training. Where does it go? Does it show in a list under all the folders and then I assign it to a folder? Yes, so once you add a brand new qualifications to your database, it's going to add it to your master list. So this is your master list. It's going to add it in here. And then you go back to your chart, and then you can search for that and add it to the folder that you want it to. So if you wanted to add that, let's say you added that brand new qualification and you want to add it to your, your favorites folder, just make sure favorites is selected, and then search for your qualification. Either put in the code or the name of the qualification and then click it to add it to whichever folder that you want so that you can now select it within your personal equipment records. 
All right. Any other questions? I know we are running a little bit over, but you guys had a lot of questions, which I really like. Any other questions? I think this uh, about sums up everything that will be uh, covered in today's training. All right. Well, before I let you guys go, let me uh, just pull up Salamander University real quick here. So if you click on this link, all the Salamander Live, so all the trainings are going to be available within these different folders. So this kind of looks similar to the setup for qualifications. We try, try to make it the same so that if you know how to work one thing, you'll know how to work another. So these little boxes, if you click on them to expand them, you'll see that there's different uh, links for these qualifications. Now something that you'll notice, especially if you've taken the version 1 trainings, is that, is that these ones do not have audio on them. We had very little time to complete the trainings on here. I know that's not a good excuse, but uh, you are able to at least, uh, there's some screen uh, text that you can read, and there are demos within the videos that you can watch us how to do uh, a certain feature or function in here. So we do have a couple more that we're still working on that we haven't uploaded yet on here. So those should be um, uploaded in here in the next, um, I'd say, couple days to next week. There will also be a user guide that will be available, and that's going to be under Documents. As of right now, that user guide is not available yet. We are still uh, finalizing it since um, the reports are not coming in, out until tomorrow. We wanted to make sure that we have that section added into the re uh, to the uh, resource before we uploaded that in here. So your documents is going to include your guides, your quick reference guides. This is going to be for personnel um, imports and equipment imports, any templates, and any other documents will be available in here. Now next month, we are going to be focusing on inventory management. As you know, inventory management feature is part of Salamander Live, and that's going to be re uh, released on August 16th, and that's Thursday. And that's also going to be the release of the inventory app as well, too. So on that same day for our launch, we will be running a webinar. So I highly recommend you register for that. Um, take a look at the reminder emails that were sent out to you from our marketing team. And also within the bulletins, that's going to have registration information. There's two trainings that will be run next month for inventory management. So if your organization has purchased that or you just want to learn more about um, inventory management, please join me on that call. And we're going to go through uh, all the full details of how to work uh, all those new features in there. All right, now after this call, you will be receiving a, a evaluation. If you can, please make sure you complete that for me. Um, be honest, and uh, if there's any topics or things that you, you want us to cover, make sure that you let us know. In our next bulletin next month, we'll have the rest of the schedules for um, the uh, different contents or topics that we'll be covering for Salamander Live uh, version 2, the updated site. All right, since there's no other questions, again, thank you so much for being on the call today with me. Uh, this recording will be available within Salamander Live or in, in Salamander University, so you can go back and review it if you need to. Other than that, thank you everybody for spending your time with me this morning. Have a great week.